I'm Eliza Griswold, and I'm here with filmmaker and photographer Seamus Murphy. We are in Lashkar Gah, which is the capital of Helmand province, which is one of the largest and one of the ones that has been most restive of Afghanistan's 34. Helmand is known as a center for opium poppies, and a couple of IEDs yesterday on the highway have kept us off the road today. Uh, very recently, a suicide attack left several people dead here in, in Lashkar Gah, and we are keeping it pretty close to home today. Uh, yesterday, however, we were in a, essentially a suburb about 75 kilometers north of Lashkar Gah, and we were there not reporting on suicide bombing, not reporting on IEDs, not reporting on the same old efforts to eradicate opium poppies. We were reporting on women's poetry, and a little known, little very ancient form called a landai, which is about two lines long, and within it, Afghan women talk about the things that matter most to them. They talk about love, they talk about sex, they talk about war, they talk about the Taliban, they talk about the American forces, they talk about everything they really want to talk about. And what brought us here in particular is the life of one young poet named Rahila Muska. Well, that was her pen name, and we didn't know until we came here to Lashkar Gah and on to her hometown of Gresh, her actual name was Zarmina. And Zarmina wrote, she recited these Lande, which are really anonymous and mostly allowed. It's an oral tradition, which is one reason women have been able to hold on to this precious and secret form of self-expression, because if they're caught at it, nobody knows who really wrote it in the first place. Nobody knows who said it first. Well, Zarmina was a great creator of Landai, as well as a poet in other forms as well. And isolated from the outside world, not allowed to leave the house, not allowed to go to any kind of school whatsoever, she fell in love with poetry. When she was a little girl, she was known for loving to dance at weddings and loving to sing as well, which basically means reciting poetry. And as she grew up and became increasingly stuck and, and constricted and really stuck in her own house, she found a group of women poets in Kabul, in the capital, and, and she heard them on the radio. She heard them on Radio Azadi, which means Freedom Radio, and she started calling in, calling into their group every Saturday when the women's group meets in Kabul and reading her poems and reading Landai over the phone so that she could really talk to fellow women. We heard this story sadly after her death. No one knew where she was, no one knew who she was, and after hours of phone calls and tracking down any scraps of information, cousins of cousins, friends of friends, women's affairs members who didn't know her but thought they might have heard of her, thought they might have heard of a girl who had been drowned, no, no, a girl who had been burned, a, a girl who had commit suicide herself. We finally, finally found her. We found Zarmina's family, her parents, although they lied to her about her story. We found her aunt, Torpakai. We found her friends. And we got the story of this young woman who, although she was kept behind walls, first by family custom and then by a war, she was able to express herself on the phone and in poetry and able to give voice not only to herself, but really in this anonymous and collective form to the women of Afghanistan in the most rebellious, powerful, and memorable way imaginable.